Hi, I'm Shannon. And I want to talk for a minute about how to be a strong advocate for yourself um, if you are a solo senior. And this is something that um, we're seeing a lot of. People who come, like for example, if you come to Florida, maybe your family's far away, maybe you don't have family, um, or maybe your family is estranged. And that's very common um, that we may see people who don't have any, any real uh, trusted contacts. And they may be like an introverted person, so maybe they are even in a um, like an independent living situation or a, a CCRC, like a community, where they they really haven't formed a lot of relationships or relationships where there's um, a sense that this person would take care of you if you got sick or needed help. So what do you do in those situations when you're a solo senior and you need to have an advocate um, and you might even be have, di have a diagnosis um, of a medical condition that requires um, you know ongoing uh, help and having an advocate senile dementia or neurocognitive deficit disorder um, is one of those diagnoses that if you have it and you don't have somebody to help you it can be very challenging when it comes to managing your finances managing your health care and you can become a real target for financial exploitation um, and undue influence um, we often see you know this grooming by exploiters um, when they know someone is without uh, a trusted contacts and without healthcare advocates. Um, so you need an advocate. Um, and that usually can consist of one of your financial advisors um, who is not your actual financial advisor. That may be a good place to look. CPAs, attorneys, I don't recommend because they're so expensive. Um, I don't do it for clients. I'm asked on a regular basis to be their advocate. I, I don't have time and it's too much money um, to have an attorney do that job. So you're better off um, using some professionals who are trained and have experience such as licensed clinical social workers who have also become um, geriatric care managers. Um, we also like to use elder care coordinators in that role. My personal favorite for helping with um, asset and medical advocacy is a guardian, a professional guardian, someone who does that job as their occupation. So professional guardians are often bonded, they're insured, they have experience. Of course, you wanna pick one that doesn't have too big of a caseload, that has a good reputation in the community, and then you wanna meet with that person. You wanna to talk to them. You wanna see if they're willing to take on this role. Um, and then what is their succession plan? So is there someone who works in their office who could take over if they are unable to do it? Um, we also often have the option of using a pooled trust to help with the financial decision making. And sometimes they will immediately appoint a healthcare surrogate or they work hand in hand with a healthcare surrogate um, who would be willing to make the medical decision, decision making for you, like a geriatric care manager. So, um, lots of options there, um, but I always recommend for people to have this done in advance. It should be as part of your estate planning. Sometimes your local elder law attorney like me, I have a list of people that I recommend to our clients who are solo seniors, and then I make sure they meet with them before we actually put it into an estate plan. But then once it's ready, we can just drop their names into the durable power of attorney, we can um, drop their names into the designation of healthcare surrogate, or we put them into the trust instrument that we might be drafting for our person. And then I also become like a little double check, like, oh no, our, our guardian died. Um, Mrs. Jones, you know, we need to redo, we, we need to find a new guardian or are you okay with um, this backup person serving? And then let's add on a new backup person. So working together with an elder law attorney and working together with um, people who do this as their profession is something that I highly recommend. And you know, we've got to get our stuff ready because um, that those kinds of financial and medical decision makings can become incredibly important. And what we don't want to do is have a guardian appointed by the court 
who you don't know and maybe you know it is or isn't the person that you would have chosen if you could have made that decision for yourself okay i hope you guys are having a good day it's just something i wanted to update on for our people who maybe don't have loved ones that they can call on um to be good at, at kind of stepping into those fiduciary roles all right have a good one